morning, everyone, and, and welcome to uh, the beautiful campus of Brockton High School in Brockton, Massachusetts. We have some wonderful guests joining us today, and we certainly have with us the pride of Brockton High and the Brockton Public Schools. So welcome to all the students that are going to be sharing some of your wonderful talents, especially our teachers, uh, our administrators who support all of our students. Uh, we have school committee member uh, Tom Minicello from Ward 1, uh, vice chair of our school committee. We have Susan McCastro, uh, our new city councilor from Ward 4. We have uh, our dean sitting in the audience, and we are so pleased to welcome you, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, to this very special event. So let me start by talking about this event. So back uh, about a year ago, um, there was talk about this year being, first of all, the 25th anniversary of what's called the McDuffie case. Can anyone tell me what that is? And I didn't prep you for this, and it's okay. Does anyone know what the McDuffie case is? Okay, so the McDuffie case is about a young girl. Do you want to tell me? I know you know. Oh, okay. Do you want to tell the Mr. Minichello? The McDuffie case back 1993, but before that, um, the school system was in, in, in such just financial distress that we had kids, we had the 35, 40 kids in a class, we had kids sitting on radiators, uh, we had you know, 25 textbooks for you know, 35 kids. We were really in a financial bind with regard to being able to provide the, ba the basics for our students. So Brockton was basically um, the lead plaintiff in an action seeking fairness in funding, fairness in, in, in education. So the Brockton Public Schools um, and a child, a student of the Brockton Public Schools, um, had to bring an action in order to have the state re-look at how the funding of education took place because primarily back then, um, the city uh, tried to provide the majority of the funding, but being from a, an economically disadvantaged community, a lot of the urban communities and smaller rural communities are in the same position. Um, they were unable to sustain uh, budgets for sort of a, a, a level of fairness across the board uh, uh, compared to some of our suburban counterparts. You know, I'm just going to use an example of, say, Duxbury or situated or Eastman or Sharon or what have you. So the students in those schools were being provided because their tax base and their um, population could provide uh, more funding for the schools in those communities and you know, have reasonable class sizes, have enough textbooks, um, have enough you know, uh, teacher to student ratios. So um, we had to bring an action and in fact uh, the courts looked at it and during the, the court's rebook, the state basically um, also re-looked at it, and it was a reworking of the way funding was calculated for districts all over the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Some districts on a local level provide 80% um, of funding, and uh, the state provides 20%. In our case, it's more of the opposite. Um, you know, we get more funding from the state and the city is able to contribute uh, less based on the tax revenue that um, the community can generate. And, and unfortunately, you know, that took place in 1993. Well, there's been a lot of changes recently. Um, and up to now, you know, changes with regards to just life in general, you know, technological changes. Um, uh, changes with regards to, you know, updating curriculum and books and textbooks and you know, it just is a lot more expensive today in order to bring students and provide students with what they need to go on to, guess what, college next year for the seniors. So we need to make sure that the playing field for our students in the Brockton Public Schools um, is, is level with, with these other communities. So the, the, uh, the McDuffie case, which then translated because um, I think um, she graduated, right? So she graduated and was no longer a student while this case was sort of going through the courts, um, was replaced with another student who was still in the Brockton Public Schools um, by the name of Hancock. Um, and, and basically, the case finally resolved to such that there was a new formula put in place where the courts determined that the state was doing enough at the time, back in 1993, 
Uh, they rework the formula in communities such as Brockton and, like I said, other communities that uh, have more economic difficulties than others were provided with a new formula so that the funding was leveled out and the court determined, you know what, it might not be perfect, but the state has done, we feel, enough to bring the field to um, somewhat of a level playing field. So, unfortunately now, several years later, you know, being 2018, a lot of things have changed. You know, the needs uh, have increased. The, unfortunately, the cost to educate kids because of the you know, advances in technology, etc., um, has gone up. And that funding formula, unfortunately, is a little bit stale now. So, so you know, it hasn't really changed much. And you know, based on circumstances, we feel now that our community uh, needs to be re-looked at because, you know, as you all know, when you pick up the newspaper, you can see every year for the last five years in Brockton we've had, unfortunately, a regressive budget. We've had a budget that every year, like last year, was a $16 million you know, in the red deficit. This year, it's, it's close to $9 million. The year before that, it was $8 million. I mean, so we're trying to provide for you and your education in our community, but having to make horrible decisions every year in terms of you know, layoffs and elimination of programs and you know all the things that we need to provide to you, technology, <coughs> smaller class sizes, um, interventions, you know, today, as we all know, it's more complicated to be a kid today, you know, than it was years ago. So we need to basically, you know, we look at that funding formula so that we can, again, bring the playing field level again. <coughs> it will never be perfect, but, you know, back into sort of reality based on the current needs, the current costs of doing business, basic business, health insurance, etc. cetera. Um, so we're going to relook at that right now. And so the, that, that McDuffie case was the start of the original recalculation of the funding formula that brought communities like ours you know, back into you know, somewhat of a level playing field. But right now we need to relook at that again because you know, we've gone back this way instead of keeping sort of level. In a nutshell, then. <laughs> <laughs> but what you have done, and what we're going to celebrate, is a wonderful partnership with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, because when the McDuffie case came in, there were not only mandates for districts like Brockton, we had to make sure that you got the best education possible, had an opportunity to get accepted at the best colleges, opportunities to make uh, decisions about careers, the fine arts that we're going to highlight. So although you are from an urban district and Jamie McDuffie sat in your very seats, we will continue, obviously, when you look at your school committee, we will continue to advocate so that you have every bit of funding you need to be the wonderful students to excel and to go on and to be very successful. And we do that in a partnership. We do that and you have to understand the oversight. Now we have a, a commissioner, our Commissioner Jeff Riley, he is a newly appointed commissioner that comes out as a partner and looks at some of the struggles we have, looks at some of the successes we have, and we have continual dialogue to make sure as a state that we are doing exactly what we said, and that's leading the nation. We are number one out of all 50 states as far as our student achievement, and that is what the Leading the Nation campaign has been all about, and Brockton, because of the McDuffie case, felt we wanted to be at the forefront. We wanted to celebrate everything that has happened over these 25 years. And we want to, for another 25 years and beyond, be able to continue to celebrate all the wonderful things. So we are very pleased to have the Associate Commissioner, Cliff Schwarm. Cliff, please, I think you've seen Cliff out there. I'll look at We also have uh, Joan Tuttle, who is a liaison that works very closely with Brockton, is in and out of our schools. And Jacqueline Reese, also from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. I also see, and of course you have Dr. Murray, who is hosting this wonderful event, his first year as principal at Brockton High School. I want to thank him for, with all of your administrators, making sure today that you get to see the best that we have to offer. And when we talk to you about being so proud that we are leading the nation, we want to make sure that for years to come, that our students, and I have to tell you, and I tell them this all the time, I always end by saying, that I am the proudest superintendent in the state. 
And I say that because two months ago, I went in in March to the Drama Festival, where I think we started out with, what, 114 districts? And we came in fifth in the end out of 114 districts. And I have to tell you, when I go there, there aren't always lots of urban districts there, but we're there. Because it's important for us to have an excellent opportunity for drama. With Mr. Macrina and our band, you know, we nationally perform. And we make sure that our students, who aren't always getting private violin lessons or other things that maybe families can't afford, we do make sure that we provide all of those extra opportunities. From the time they're in fourth grade, and when you hear Mr. Minicello talk about some of the struggles, one of the decisions we made this year was we couldn't start it in fourth grade. We had to start it in fifth grade. Now that doesn't seem like much, but that's a lot. That makes a difference when he is putting together a middle school um, music opportunities and up to the high school. So these are the things little by little that are the tough decisions we're making and we don't want to make them on the backs of our students. Because we're the ones that stand here and graduate a thousand students on June 2nd this year that'll go on to college, to career. And again, not everybody is an academic. Some of them will go on because of some of the very talents that you've seen here that have kept them motivated in school. So the wraparound services are part of what I think we do best in the Brockton Healthy School. So thank you so much for being part of the Leading the Nation Tour. Um, I would like to uh, invite uh, Associate Commissioner, uh, oh, sorry, Ethan. Uh, how I never miss Jay Stewart. <laughs> So, again, uh, Jay Stewart was actually a parent of a student in the Brockton Public School and a proud parent of a graduate of Brockton High School. He also was an elected official in Brockton, one of our city councilors, a number of years ago. And I know you have a new title, Jace. Uh, I do. But you have got to mention Jamie is actually a teacher. Yes, uh, Jamie McDuffie is now a teacher in the Brockton Public Schools. Is that a hint that they'll come back and teach? <laughs> but I always talk about you, so I'm always happy if you're able to come back. But Jay Stewart is one of our own in Brockton, and we're always proud of the work he does with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. And, and thank you for always making Brockton you know, part of the journey and whatever is happening. I appreciate that. So Cliff, now can I have you come up as the associate? <laughs> Please give Cliff a round of applause. Well, it's great to be here. Uh, I, uh, this morning, actually, through Facebook, guess which teacher is the only teacher uh, from my high school that I'm still in touch with over Facebook? My orchestra teacher. <laughs> so, um, I know how important music education is to your experience as students. Um, it, is, it was one of the formative experiences for me. I think more than anything, it teaches you hard work and perseverance because no one ever plays the song right the first time, no, no one ever draws the sort of you know the perfect uh, piece right away. You have to try and try again, you screw up. At the very beginning, as many of your parents may know, it doesn't sound so great uh, when you're first learning. But that's what education is about, trying, learning, uh, and, and hard, working hard. And I'm really excited to hear the hard work that you will be um, demonstrating today. Um, I think I also would love to recognize uh, the teachers, particularly music and art teachers, uh, this week during Teacher Education Week. <laughs> teacher year over year because there's not necessarily very many of them and that's why I'm still in touch with Mr. Witt, uh, my orchestra teacher. And um, I know that for my own kids, uh, visual arts and uh, music are really important to sort of giving them a much more rounded experience. So we are really excited that um, even though we are often noted for leading the nation academically, I know that across the state we have such talent in terms of music and arts and we're really excited to hear from you. So, Let's get to it. <laughs> I also want you to know on the note of teacher appreciation, we, we have Kim Gibson here who is the president of our Brockton Education Association, all of our teachers, and is a teacher herself. So please give her a hand. <laughs> and every day. 
And uh, next, I'd like to invite up uh, Dr. Cliff Murray to welcome you to Brockton High School. Well, I'll be brief. <laughs> I think it's important when we talk about leading the nation and celebrating the arts that we talk about the young people uh, that are involved. And not only do we have musicians and uh, actors, artists here, but we also have uh, student council uh, president. We have athletes. Uh, we have mentors. These are students that are contributors uh, in all phases of our school. They are the arts. As, uh, mentioned uh, help around help type of uh, students that we are dreaming of that we, we start as teachers. Uh, our jazz group uh, went to Washington DC not too long ago. I had a parent come up to me at the JROTC banquet, which actually many of the students were involved in as well, and couldn't have been more complimentary about the way they conducted themselves and represented themselves in that community. So these students are not, are, are not only leaders in terms of arts and music, but in our community and school. So I think it's a tribute to their teachers and to their families and to themselves. Uh, and hopefully you will enjoy what I have uh, come to greatly appreciate in my short time. Here. So thank you. Good morning. I'm Sarah Richards. I'm the Director of Art for the Brockton Public Schools. Welcome to Brockton. Um, we have a strong tradition of the arts here in Brockton, and we could not be prouder of our visual arts and our performing arts programs. Um, our arts curriculums create hands-on, challenging experiences that promote critical and innovative thinking skills. We strive to teach our students to be creative thinkers that are open to new ideas and are willing to explore and take risks. We teach our students to be independent enough to solve problems and persistent enough to keep working to produce unique works of art that represent their views and who they are. Um, we not only challenge our students to create artwork, but we challenge them to rewrite and speak about their own artwork and the artwork of others. And hopefully you experienced that today as some of them took you through the art show. We have an award-winning visual arts and theater program here at Brockton High School. This year, our visual arts students have won 16 various scholastic art awards, including two national medals. Two of our students were selected to display work in the UMass Dartmouth Emerging Young Artists Juried Art Show, and our AP art students continuously score threes and fours, earning college credits while they're here in high school. Um, I hope you had an opportunity to view the annual Harbor One Art Show in the lobby. <coughs> this work reflects a cohesive K-12 art department. Uh, students in Brockton begin receiving quality art education in kindergarten, and this is the result because they have it year after year. Our well-known theater department has won accolades, including advancing to the state finals of the Massachusetts Theater Guild competition five out of the last six years. Um, they also won Best Musical in the State in 2015 for their production of Anything Goes. Um, our theater program continuously wins acting, set design, lighting, costume, awards through the METG. And this year, uh, two of our students placed in the MEG Monologue Scholarship Competition. We got second place and an honorable mention. And we've actually placed in that competition um, three out of three years. So that's pretty prestigious and we're proud of our students for that. Um, we're proud of our students' accomplishments, but beyond the awards and the accolades, we believe that this art program prepares our students for what's beyond high school, uh, whether it's college, military, or the workforce. All of our students are not going to have careers in art and music, but what is their high school and their elementary, their K-12 education in art and music, and how can they transfer those skills into other uh, careers? So art goes beyond presenting the facts. It creates experiences. It allows students to communicate complex ideas in a variety of forms. Art brings knowledge, to the knowledge and a student's interpretation of that knowledge together to form experiences that resonate in students' mind. Our students come from many different backgrounds and they bring with them various experiences, both culturally and socially. <coughs> As educators, we build upon these experiences to connect their educations and their lives. The arts allow them to express their lives and gives them confidence in who they are and where they came from. 
and we encourage our students to question and analyze the world around them. By encouraging our students to integrate their lives with their education, we enable them to reach their personal best while validating their diversities and allowing them to discover and accept their strengths and weaknesses. The, artists are, the arts are a great connector and motivator. They reflect the real world. The arts are fundamental to communicating and understanding not only ourselves but others. And this is why, in Brockton, we believe that art education is fundamental. So now I would like to introduce some students to give some testimonials about the department. Um, so I'd like to first introduce Diana Diaz. She is an AP art student. She's going to talk to you about her experience here at Brockton High and in the art program. My name is Diana Diaz. I'm a senior at Brockton High and I'm an AP art student. I'm originally from Honduras and my native language is Spanish. I've been living in this country for four years now, and I actually learned English by taking ESL courses in this school. Um, what art means to me? I think art is the most beautiful language in which I can express with my hands what my mind can imagine. And I love that because I can express my feelings, my beliefs, myself completely. And I just simply love the freedom that I have to be who I want to be. The art department, there's just so much to say about it that I don't really know where to start. The Brockton High Art Department is just the greatest place I have found here. And I say the greatest because it gives motivation to be the artist we want to be. It offers many different mediums to create art like ceramics, sculpture, digital photo, 3D modeling, and many others. It is just a perfect, perfect place where students can explore themselves as artists and be who they really are. It gives us freedom to do so. And the greatest of it, of it is that we the students and all the teachers are the ones who make this happen and keep this department <coughs> alive. And the teachers, I may not know them all, but they are such amazing people and I respect what they do. I respect and admire the support they give the students and I love how they inspire us to be better, to be successful, and not to be conformist but instead to push ourselves even further. I simply love how they make me feel like I belong here and how they help me grow more and more every passing day. I love how they treat us and respect us. Without them, this department wouldn't be what it is because they work so hard to help us and to keep this department alive, as I said before. Also, the talent Brockton High students have to offer is just gorgeous and mesmerizing and I think that's a good enough reason to keep this department ongoing. I am just proud of being a Brockton High student and part of this department. I will definitely send my kids here because it has made such a great impact in my life. And we shall all be proud that the city has this amazing school and amazing art department and that we all belong here. Thank you. from our uh, theater program, Aisha Guzon. Hi, my name is Aisha Guzon and I'm a senior here at Brockton High. Before I begin, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for admiring all the hard work that we put into everything here and just making us feel better than we normally would. <laughs> I have been involved with the Brockton High School Drama Program since the very first show of my freshman year. After this musical, I will have completed 15 out of the 16 shows available to me. Throughout these four years, I have learned practically every aspect within the process of putting together a show. I began as a wardrobe coordinator and was often put in charge of changing actors in between scenes many of which consisted of fast-paced 30 to 45 second changes. Then I moved on to being one of the few people who did makeup. Following that, I coordinated props, acted on stage, and I've even sat in the director's seat alongside Mr. Hogan as a student director. My involvement within this drama club is what brought me to make the decision to follow through with theater in my next coming years as a college student. 
Through these four years, I learned the importance every person plays within the production of a show. Without costumes, props, or a set, actors wouldn't be able to, to successfully tell the story of a show. I learned the significance of trusting a process and following through with every motion. And even though it might feel like we spent every waking moment here, the final product shows the impact all of our hard work leaves. I was taught a sense of open-mindedness, not only to understand the motives of a character, but also to understand other people and myself. Through my time as a student director, I gained my love for teaching others and helping others improve upon themselves. I understood the importance of viewing things from other people's perspectives and going through another person's thought process. These shows make us as students more than just cast or crew members. We form bonds and relationships that make us family. We get to support one another through the hardships and stresses our lives bring. For most of us, we gain the feeling of being appreciated, respected, and loved, where it might not be seen in our regular daily classes or even at home. The arts generally isn't looked upon as a successful career. Here, we're motivated to do what we love and what we believe in, and we can carry that into anything we choose to do. Not only has this drama program allowed me to better myself as a person, but it gave me valuable lessons I'll never be able to forget. There may be a line miss, a prop loss, or a costume rip, but no matter what inconveniences take place, the show must go on. Thank you. I'd like to introduce um, Mr. Martina, the director of music. <laughs> but that was Plato. And since we had this great philosopher that we admire, why we're not listening to him today? He's absolutely right. I think Sarah said a lot of things, and, and my student teacher, my, my students, I said something they were going to uh, actually say more than that. I'm going to be very short. I want to say this even better than that I'm going to do. We here in Brockton, as you can see, we are, I have seen great support for many, many, many years. I've seen outstanding students. Um, and I'd like to start with the tale of two students. Why, what we do here and why it's important. Not everybody can play sports here. Not everyone is, everyone has their own style. I think the greatest thing that this school system has, has done is provide everything for the community. You know, we're having a university, we certainly have the ability and if you want to become the first trumpet player in the Boston Symphony, or whatever it is, you do that. And I'll tell you that two quick, two quick stories I said, tale of two cities. I met a student in a uh, long time ago. He was um, uh, he, uh, East Junior High, and he wasn't going to come. He played a little bit of music, but he, his mother was a little afraid about him coming to such a live school. He had some, women, some discipline, he didn't believe in that. So uh, I, I talked around him a little bit. I went over there, I still remember being at East Junior High, uh, talking to the mother. She was a little nervous about this. They went to Brockton High School, continued the music, I said. I know he loves that a little bit. He says, once you get up there, he gets involved with the kids that understand what's, what's going on. And I said, now I'm telling you, he will succeed. So he came up here, and from this kid, nobody thought he was going to make it. I saw him having such a growth because he was so happy with what he found in that program, dealing with other kids. But that kid went to college, and I had some, we had some music, was late, he didn't know certain things and what was going on. That kid came in and graduated, he graduated about six, seven years ago. Then he went to UMass, graduated earlier, and he's now working for the FBI as an investigator. 
And the parent, when he came up there, she said, she said to me, the date I couldn't go, she said to me, you know what, if you never had stopped this kid and the music program, you'd never be able to do this And the other kid is the person I spent to do that. Again, I'm going to why we are so important. Well, I started him, he worked out here, and we didn't want to do it first, but we gave him here, and the minute he came down, he found a foundation that he really grabbed to and so on. And what we gave him was a foundation so he could leave Bronson High School, go to UMass, get a full scholarship to UMass, stay there for two years, and not uh, University of, of Florida, gave him more money to go down there, and today he was one of the top players in this country. Brian Stanley, is right now he's playing with Brian Census. So the two things with this done, that if you, it, it, those kids that were having some issues, that, the music is such a powerful, powerful thing. And then, you know, the happiness of being surrounded, I'm sure all of them, being with these kids, the memories, it, it is unbelievable. You know, this kid could play sports. Uh, he, well, he would never, he couldn't play other things. But he was bright, and the music brought it out here from, from me because it was a safe place for him to do. So I think that it is extremely, important that we have here because what, what my superintendent said this year we got a little hit um, and it is a detriment because next year for instance how does it work well we have both play well you know next year there will be no holiday concerts because all the kids will be beginners and you can't perform you know after a month a week and a half and that class will come down here and eventually hit here and for one solid year there will be no students up here which would be awful as I think if we talk to these so I, I don't have to say, you said it eloquently, and I, and I just want to tell you that, um, what, what it's like to be in a music program. So I don't have to tell you how important it is. Uh, it's just we need to know that why we're always a, kind of attacking. We are, but we're not as good as we think we are in that area. You take Texas, you take New York, you take some of the stuff. You know, we fight for half an hour a day in the elementary school. Fight. And we produce great stuff. Can you imagine if these kids get this every day for half an hour, where we would be? I show my students, um, some Asian students performing in private here, and I, I've been, I told them, shut the, their eyes, and you'll understand. There's an orchestra, and they were playing a Boston Mildestino, which the Boston Symphony plays. I said, then close your eyes, turn around. This big this group, this group of kids go on, all of a sudden, they have no idea. And they turn around, and they're fifth in sixth graders, playing like you would not believe. Am I right? They just got blown away when they see this little chord there. And I kept on going, sounding like better than an all state band. Now, how do they do that? Well, you know, the brains must be working like that then, because, you know, you know what it takes to play violin, which is the most, I'm assuming, string. Uh, which is the most, the, one of the most difficult instrument to play. Even the most difficult instrument to play by the way. What's going on in the kid's brain as you do it, the focusing, the, 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 the processing, you know, the time and everything that we learn, all that we want the kids to do in a classroom. So I, I, I leave it there for, for you so you understand, but I just want some of our accomplishments, they were very proud. I said that from this high school, we've had numerous kids always every year in district. When you put in 30 out of 60, I'm talking to uh, Mr. Cunningham, my, my fault director, up here. He brought 13, um, 13 students from Austria last year. Uh, the National State Advent. The American Choral Directors Association National and Eastern Division Honor Choir. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do for our Pittsburgh, and Minneapolis. So we need to continue on so these kids come here and have the experience that from chorus to, 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 to band. And, and, and I do want to say that the support in the city, though, for, for our has been outstanding. All, the, all 47 years that I've been here, outstanding. We couldn't do it without. There's no question of it. And uh, um, I'm leaving in here pretty soon, so I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to go any place else. I mean, I, I'm not saying this. I need the administration, this is from superintendent, from Kathy, all the way to all the people I work with have recognized and this, but we do get into tough situations, uh, you know, in, in invested in. But I also want to mention some of the, the accolades. Right now we have students that walked out of here. The first trumpet player of the, of the Singapore Symphony is from Brockton. The first trumpet player for the St. Louis Symphony is from Brockton. Uh, Brian Setzer performing over there. Tom Murray is performing on Broadway. 
Um, and I can go on and on and on and on. Just like we have had a lot of kids going to Harvard University in this area, we also have placed a lot of kids into, into uh, a, a, an area where we have given the foundation to become what they really want to do. So I hope we continue to have great partnerships that you understand, and I'm, I'm so happy that someone that has music and so on is going to be part of, part of, part of, part of us. And so on. I, don't, I, I spoke a little longer than that. So I wanted to introduce um, Sarah, and she's going to say, even put all this together. Director, and this is Matt Cunningham, our choral director here. 
and we have been working countless hours getting our uh, musical 9 to 5 ready for all of you. Uh, so you're going to have uh, a little experience right now watching two scenes and two numbers. I just might and change it. And speaking in the world that we live in today, this very topical musical will address exactly um, what education is, is really all about. I just might, uh, looking out into the world and following your dreams and change it, we too have to change it and raise our voices if we want something done. So our students are really excited to be performing uh, for you and, and, and we're happy to put this on. I think it's important too to recognize that these students are uh, enrolled in choral classes and acting classes during the school day, but also after school in co-curricular ensembles and in the drama club after school, and they really get some uh, cross-training between the two disciplines of vocals and acting, and uh, this is a nice collaboration that we end our year with. It's traditional spring musical, and we are excited to sing this for you. Sorry, Matthew. And these are the best of the best kids. We are so proud of them, so before we even go, thank you. Ooh. 
participating in this show in one aspect or another. So we're very proud of it. Thank you.
uh, Mr. Cunningham, who would understand all this about percussion. The art of improvisation is to make things instantly, I would talk about the brains, instantly while you're playing. You're following a pattern, you just can't just play notes. It's all stripped out in, 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 a, in a chordal pattern that you have to play these notes here. So when you think about what the brain is doing, and the kid is doing it at the same time, and when you're doing that, now, Brian, that was not a written thing. That was all makeup thing as he's going along, but you have a, you have a, a rubric there, really that you have to follow, that you just don't play any notes you want. It's a chordal structure, I mean, it's the inside of music. That, so your brain is doing a hundred things at once. So, as you know, being up there with the violin, you know, one wrong note in music is a disaster. So you think about all those notes that those kids, thousands, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds, it's a disaster. Because one person plays a wrong note, and it just, this is it. So, uh, a great uh, student, um, professor from Yale University did that. He said that he did that. He, uh, did he call it the academic A, and then there's the music A. In academic A, yeah, you can make one mistake, you still get an A. In music, one mistake is a failure. So think about all the notes that they got to play and all the process and, and, and put it together. That's why student kids get, you know, it helps. It helps a good deal. And that's why we have to feed this stuff to the elementary school. Because I know China and Japan have to figure this out. They, kids doesn't have to take it. They have to take it. That's why those kids were playing the way they were. So, the second part, the last thing we're going to play here, uh, ironically enough, is a tune by Brian Setzer. And that, yeah, one, one of our young men, I went down to here up there, and he's playing with the Brian Setzer band uh, down Foxwoods. So, this is another thing that we're trying to open it up to a, a lot of other people. But, uh, we're just going to keep it real short. So, I hope, it's, uh, hope you enjoyed the little dancing. Uh, dance, dance. Yeah. <laughs> crazy over here. Um, a, tune, a, a tune called Rock This Town. It's an old, an old rock and roll 50s by, written by Brian Sensor. Okay, well, you're all too young to remember Brian Sensor. Right? Um, leftover? Leftover. 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 Leftover.
delight and enjoyment that you bring to us throughout many, many years in the Brockton Public Schools. Thank you to our guests for being here uh, today and seeing our wonderful students, our faculty, and really the support, I think, of a community that is very proud of, of what we are certainly able to accomplish. Uh, thank you, Dr. Murray, for hosting us and, and all our administrators, school committee. Thank you so much for all being here. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.